today I am going to talk to you about knitting socks. Um, this is part two in a series of videos where I am reflecting on everything that I made in the last year. Um, part one I talked to you about everything that I'd been knitting that wasn't socks. Um, I decided to break them out into two different videos just because I've got a lot to say about socks. Um, so yeah, if you're interested you can go back and watch the previous video. You don't need to watch that one in order to enjoy this one. Um, although I did give a bit more context, uh, I guess, for the year at the start of that one. So I thought I would start by showing the socks that I talked about a year ago. I think it's really interesting to kind of see how socks have held up um, over, like, with proper wear. Um, so yeah, the first pair of socks that I made for myself and started wearing uh, was this pair of DK weight socks um, and out of a, I believe to be a superwash um, sock yarn. It is, yeah, it is supposedly a sock yarn. There's no nylon in it. Um, it's from, it's a blue faced, blue faced Leicester um, fibre. And yeah, so I showed this in the last, last video. So it's this amazing speckled yarn um, from Skylar, Skylar and Knits, uh, Skylar and Knit. So that's their logo. Um, there's a bit of information there. So yeah, I've actually made two pairs of socks out of this yarn. So one for me and one for my partner. Um, I started with his. Um, I mentioned a year ago that they had, they'd developed holes in them and they developed holes in them really quickly. I think he only wore them for maybe a week. Um, he is quite hard on his socks and we were trying to remember whether he, like, whether we were in a studio with wooden floors at the time and whether he was kind of walking around bare, not barefoot, but in socks on quite a rough wooden floor. So that might have made, might have been the reason why these holes developed so fast. Um, I repaired some of them, so you can kind of see two patches there of duplicate stitch. This one wasn't quite so successful, but you can see I didn't, I hadn't quite fixed that bit yet. You can see where it's just been thinning, and on the other foot, um, you, we've got a massive hole. Um, so that's just like the outside edge of the ball of his foot. Um, I think... I started repairing it and then we talked about it and kind of went, is it really worth it? Um, because if the holes have developed that quickly, you know, it just, it made us a bit suspicious about the yarn. Um, but anyway, I, I did wear my pair a little bit. Um, I have had a look to see if I can see any holes similar. Um, all I could notice was that on the, ball of my foot the stitches appear to be a bit sort of spreading a little bit just a little bit there um the heel kind of looks like it's felting um it's sort of smushing together which is what a lot of my socks have done so that's good in my books um let's just have a look at the other one i haven't washed these by the way um I, I, I don't know how much wool they, where they got before, like without me washing them. Um, but I wanted to show you what they were like pre-washing because basically all my socks have bagged out and I'm really curious to see whether if I give them another good block in, good wash, whether they're all gonna kind of go off and come back together a little bit. Um, but yeah, again, I can just see just a little bit. It's almost like, um, the ladder you get with DPNs there, it's kind of just spread out a tiny bit, um, which won't be a DPN thing because I use Magic Loop um, and it's in a, it's in like the bottom of the foot, um, so I don't know what's happened there. Um, but yeah, I stopped wearing them. Um, I think I talked about this in that video a year ago. Um, they just bagged out. And it meant then that I didn't really like wearing them in shoes. So this, so I've sort of talked about 
you know, there's a difference between house socks, socks you'd wear in normal shoes and socks you'd wear in walking boots. Um, and I don't even like these in like normal shoes, like it just felt like the fabric was just, you know, sort of crumpling in my shoe. Um, I am also suspicious holding them now, whether I could have gone for a tighter gauge. Um, but it's hard for me to say because most of the other socks that I've then knitted on were more fingering weight than DK. So I don't really have another sock yarn to compare it to. Um, so yeah, I it kind of put me off Superwash. It's kind of put me off Blueface Lester. Um, I talked to um, talked to a dyer about fibres and socks and we were a little bit suspicious that your blue face Lester um, is quite a long smooth fibre um, and so when we were kind of talking about things bagging out it's kind of like if you imagine those fibres twisted into the yarn like it doesn't it's like it doesn't surprise me that it could kind of like they could slip and extend and therefore your fabric's getting bigger um so that's one theory um that we've got and yeah i don't know <laughs> i think as i say i'm very curious to wash these um and see if i can bring them in a little bit more um but yeah, they're never going to be robust, I don't think. Um, so maybe these are just kind of house socks. So let's look at the other pair that I showed you a year ago. Okay, so the next pair is the Grow Socks um, by Fibre Tails, which is just such a cute pattern. Um, this yarn is a Regia sock yarn that's got silk in it. Um, I fell in love with the sample uh, in the shop for these and was just, yeah, had to make them. Um, so I want to show you, <laughs> they look really tight. <laughs> um, so these actually have had a lot of wear, um, as in they've been in my daily rotation. So, you know, they might have easily been, been worn like once a week, maybe more. Um, and there are no holes. Um, if I show you the underside, um, again, these haven't been washed, so I hope you don't mind. I just, I, but I feel like it's more helpful to see them at this stage. Um, so the fabric has pilled quite a lot. It's sort of, I mean, if we try and look at it, you can kind of see that it's quite, there's lots of like bitty bits. Um, and if we have a look at the heel, you know, see how the fabric is kind of like slightly felted and slightly pilled and stuff. Um, so I suppose even though it looks a little bit tatty, it's held up really well. Um, you know, that's kind of meant that like no holes have developed. Um, I just spotted on, you know, like pinky toe side, um, that corner here has like like the pilling has basically created like a felted bit of fabric on top. Um, so that's almost offering like extra fabric, extra cushioning, um, which is pretty cool. And I don't really notice or feel anything wearing it. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. So these have stretched and have bagged out, um, but I don't mind it like in my shoe. So, you know, if I wear this with just like, like Chelsea boots, which is kind of what I, um, like a barefoot Chelsea boot, um, they, like nothing happens, like I, like I can't feel them, um, 
they're just there um, and feel really good. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit surprised because I'm not sure I would have bought that sock yarn now. Um, like I don't think, I don't think it's 100% natural. I think there might be a bit of polyamide or something in it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's held up pretty good. Um, the only thing that I get a bit bothered about is the, um, the height. Uh, I find that the, this length of leg is just a little bit short and I kind of like, yeah, get cold, cold legs. <laughs> um, so yeah, I could do with a few inches longer on these. Um, and yeah, it does kind of bag out to the point where like the cuff feels quite loose um, on my leg. So yeah, I don't know whether I would do anything different, but then I don't, I'm not really drawn to using this yarn again. So I feel like there's no point kind of going, should I have gone down a needle size? Should I have done less stitches? Cause yeah, I'm not going to do that again, I don't think. So um, yeah, overall, a success like the got a pair of socks that I can wear all the time um so again I will show you what they look like before on my foot before and after another blocking <laughs> the end of last year's video um, I was like one and a half socks in um, to making this pair so I'd, I'd made one and I was halfway through the next um, so I just show you so this is my own recipe it's just a what, three by one rib um, sock this is in um, woolly mammoth fibers hearth DK sock yarn so I was no delete the DK there hearth sock yarn um because sorry she now has a hearth DK yarn so yeah not DK um so I was really really excited to get my hands on some of this sock yarn because she described it as like slightly thicker than her natural sock um and yeah just the way that she described it how like warm it sounded just amazing um so yeah i can i can tell you that this this yarn is amazing um it knits up so beautifully um i was just gonna show you how the um how it's held up and actually we've got a lot of the same stuff happening where it's like we've almost got a secondary secondary layer of fabric developing where it's kind of the fibre is sort of pilling um, and then felting together. It's really obvious. Again, this is this is where my pinky toe is. Um, loads of fibre is sort of pilled away and then felted to create that extra little bit. Um, again, if we look at the heel of the foot, we've kind of got a lot of compression and a lot of felting, which is great. Um, the only bit that I can find where you know, I'd be worried about holes or thinning or anything, is that outer edge of the ball of your foot. So still underneath the foot. So I don't know how well you can see, this area here is starting to sort of just stretch out and thin out a little bit more than the rest of the fabric. Um, so that just seems to be a thing um, that I guess I do with socks. Um, so I don't know whether that's going to need something. I guess I could reinforce it, um, but I'm probably just going to wait and see what happens and just try and keep an eye on it. These socks have had so much wear. Um, they're probably, yeah, one of my favourite socks. Super duper practical. Um, I did. <laughs> I, I actually added an extra bit well, I added the cuff 
um, I don't like I I guess I hadn't realized from the grow socks at that point that I was needing that extra bit of length up the leg um, just to keep my legs warm so yeah I added this cuff I haven't done a great job really it's sort of yeah I don't know I think the way that I picked up stitches or maybe like what that cast on edge was like to begin with before I then picked up and knitted it sort of sits a little bit funny um, but it's fine it works um, but yeah these socks I have been wearing in normal shoes and I can even wear them in my walking boots uh, which is amazing they don't feel they're not like super thick walking socks um, but my walking boots aren't like too big for me so like this thickness of fabric is enough um, so yeah like they've been worn pretty hard um, I think the fabric does sort of soften up I think I was worried at first that it was a little bit prickly um, but I haven't I think only really in the summer did I notice that thing of you know when you get too hot and then that sensitivity to that prickliness of wool just kind of is too much basically so yeah I think most of the time um, it just makes for a really comfortable and warm um, sock like yeah I'm amazed at how you know on a cold day even when I'm wearing like my barefoot uh, Chelsea boots you know they've got a really thin sole on them if I'm walking around like there's enough warmth inside the shoe um, that I don't get cold feet which I think is just yeah you don't get that with like cotton socks obviously like at all I was just checking what I said about it last time um, so it turns out I when I had first knitted it I was worried it was a little bit too tight um, but it has indeed bagged out a little bit um, like all of the other yarns so but it doesn't feel like it's kind of keeps bagging out like it's almost just on that initial kind of give um, and it's also not given so much that it the fabric feels loose or bunched um, in the shoe so I think maybe it's just something that will always happen um, even when you know whether you're using superwash or non-superwash um, it seems like yeah that first knitted fabric compared to then when you've stretched it by having it by wearing it um, yeah it will grow a little bit uh, so yeah so you shouldn't fear when the sock feels tight although the next story is a story of a, a bit of a sad story about too tight a sock um, but yeah the only thing I was going to show you was I, <laughs> I'm terrible at weaving in ends um, so I'd even left the ends like inside and what's happened is that they that has like completely felted um, so that that's that was my tail from doing the kitchener stitch um, and it's just yeah a felted lump um, I think it's also quite interesting to see the pilling and felting on the inside so again I just feel like this just then makes for a more robust fabric um, like look what's happened to the heel like all of those fibres have kind of like come away from the yarn and kind of just created this really soft felted fabric uh, on the, the edge of the heel um, which is just fascinating um, so yeah I'm trying not to pull the bits off because I think that it actually enhances the fabric rather than um, is causing problems but yeah I am thinking I should probably do something about this because um, I can just about feel it uh, on my foot um but yeah i mean who leaves tails like that <laughs> i'm hoping most people do um i just like tuck them back in when i put my sock on so, yeah right next one <laughs> Thank you. 
so the next uh, sock, well, attempt at socks that I'm going to show you um, is another of the fibres from Woolly Mama Fibre Co. So that's a beautiful logo of Emma's. So this is her natural sock yarn. So it's much thinner than the hearth sock. Um, and I'd actually say that it feels like sort of thinner than fingering weight to me. Um, I think I was down to like a 1.75 mil needle. Um, so it just, it feels tiny. <laughs> um, so I'll show you what I, what I tried. Um, so it's, it's just, it is beautiful. Um, so I kind of went, is it a double moss where you kind of do, you're almost, wait, is it? Yeah, double moss. So you're kind of doing like two knits, two pearls twice and then, um, reverse that pattern. Um, so I thought it was gorgeous. I, yeah, I was really excited. This is the faded peony colorway. Um, so yeah, I made, I made the pair of socks. Um, and it took forever doing this stitch pattern because obviously like I'm a what English thrower style knitter so it's like trying to um you know it's like ribbing it just takes takes longer to get the yarn across um so I was excited when I got it finished um but every time I tried wearing them like I could feel how tight they were and that stitch pattern um actually was leaving indentations on the top of my foot and I was like this is too tight like this doesn't seem to be giving like I must have actually given it a few goes at wear because I can I can see wear on them um but yeah they just didn't they just didn't give enough at all and maybe like I wouldn't say oh this yarn is immune from stretching I think it's just I made it too tight, um, like, you know, the circumference is just too small. Um, so yeah, I was a bit gutted about that. Um, I did then think about um, doing it, holding the yarn double. Um, so I ripped one of the socks out and then knitted a bit of a swatch or maybe I started the sock or something, um, held double just because at that point I just couldn't face like how long it takes um, with this weight yarn. Um, but I really didn't like the fabric. It just felt like too dense for me. Um, like it just, you know, it was beyond a DK kind of like feel. Um, but interestingly, Emma of Woolly Mammoth Fibre recently or over Christmas shared that she did make some socks holding her natural sock double. Um, so, and she was really happy with them. So maybe I was knitting on, you know, like I'd just gone too small on the gauge, um, or maybe, you know, sort of our criteria for, <laughs> for what we wanted our socks to feel like are just different. Um, but anyway, I, yeah, I didn't like that. And then the other thing that I'd noticed was the little bit of wear that I did do, um, the colour was was both fading it's just funny for faded peony so it was fading more um but also it was picking up some of the stain in my shoes um and I was like I don't want to have this like gorgeous soft pink blush pink sock that then like shows up dirt and stuff and I was just like maybe this is just not Maybe this just isn't the right sock for me, you know, I kind of want my socks to be robust and hard wearing. I don't want to feel precious about them. Um, so then I thought, this was, I think this was then around the summertime, and I was thinking about, you know, seeing all of these like little bralettes and camis and stuff that people were making. Um, so I thought I would try making a bralette, and this is how far I got. <laughs> So I think I was trying one of um, Jessie made patterns because um, they just seem to be, you know, one of the most popular. Um, but, oh my God, 
I didn't have the patience for this at all. Like this was holding it, this was just, you know, single again. Um, and this ribbing just took so long. And I was like, I don't know if this is gonna fit me. Like, you know, it's sort of, maybe it would, but I just, I lost enthusiasm um, for that. So I'm not really sure what to do with this yarn now. Um, maybe I should go back to, to playing around with it, holding it double and try a bralette double. I don't know. Maybe this is gonna go back in, back in the, the category of summer project basically um, and see what I feel inspired with then um, but yeah I mean this is no fault to the yarn like it's it is gorgeous and like the the colour is amazing um, but yeah not for me not for socks I don't think um, well no saying that I've then the next pair that I'll show you was exactly the same weight and I've done it so maybe, maybe I can do it, but I just don't want this colour in a pair of socks. That's what I'm trying to say. Right, the next pair of socks. I was nearly going to say that these are like perfect, but they're not perfect. There is still one thing that I would change about them. <laughs> but anyway, let's have a look. So it is these magnificent stripy socks made out of, um, I always struggle to say this name, Garthenor, Garthener. Garthenor, I'm not too sure, um, but they are a, uh, they're based in Wales, South Wales, um, so I can show you, this is their Snowdonia sock yarn, um, so I've got two different colours in this, so the grey is called Bala, you can see how the different, um, the different colours are actually made up of slightly different blends. So like this one's 82.5% Romney, whereas Juniper, the green, is 75% Romney. Um, but there's not a huge difference. You can tell a little bit um, when you're working with the two yarns. But, I mean, it's not, it didn't cause a problem them being ever so slightly different. Maybe I'll, I can show you what I've got there. So I was really worried when I started working with this yarn because it felt so much um, looser, like it felt like like the spin in it. You know, you always hear about sock yarn being about high twist and for me, this was not high twist. Um, so let's get a little bit out to show you. Um, So yeah, I was a little bit worried um, and, you know, for everything I just said about finding the uh, woolly mammoth fibre natural sock like thin and having to work on tiny needles, this was the same. Like I think this was again 1.75mm um, needles. It took a very long time, especially because I, I knit like most of the leg and then tried it on and realised that I just, it was way too small. Um, I think one thing that I hadn't realised is that when you do your, when you're kind of doing gauge swatches for socks and maybe you just go, oh, well, I'm just going to knit, you know, an inch of a tube. Having just an inch of fabric and trying to stretch it stretches way more than when you have five inches of fabric and you stretch that. Um, it's kind of all to do with like the structure and stuff like that, um, the, like the elasticity. Um, so don't be fooled, <laughs> keep, keep checking, um, don't knit this much of your sock, especially in stripes, um, and then decide that it was, um, too small. Um, so in terms of the stripes, I did two rows of each colour. Um, I really, really like the subtle, um, stripe that that gives. It's not, like, the, the colours I chose aren't super high contrast, but I just, yeah, I love it. Um, one thing that I played around with was the, um, like, what do you call it? I guess it's the beginning of the round where you switch the colours. I did try a jogless method, 
Um, I, I don't even know what I did, but I tried jogless. Um, and I found that it was like that line then, because I think it involves slip stitches. And I just found that that line was being pulled. So it was like distorted, like there was more tension just along this bit than there was in the main fabric. So it kind of sat funny, like it pulled up. Um, so when I <laughs> re-knit it, um, I decided not go jogless and see what what it looked like. And I'm okay with this. Like I feel like maybe it's because it's not high contrast. Um, it doesn't really bother me. I feel like it's not that noticeable. I think I made it so that it's like my two beginning arounds or the insides of my sock, you know, sort of the inside leg. So um, it's not like that's the flashy bit on show. Um, I was aiming to go the green for all of the kind of, you know, cuff, heel and toes. Um, but I got a bit concerned that I was gonna run out of juniper, the green. So I actually, on the second sock, went for solid gray on the heel. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would have made it. Like that's how much I've got left. Like that's, I don't know, less than five grams or something. Um, I think, yeah, they come in 50 gram skeins. So that's why it's quite a good opportunity to do some color play with socks because you're not having to buy two 100 gram skeins. Um, so yeah, that's why I was drawn to going for a, a sock. Um, a stripy socks project. Um, so I did learn my lesson about the length of the sock. These are much longer and feel great. I started with the cuff. This wasn't an added cuff. Um, the only problem and why I'd say these aren't perfect is I went for the wrong cast on. Like, I don't know what I did, but it's gone very curly lettuce. You know, it's sort of when it's when I'm wearing it, it it's what well, you can see, like it rolls down. Um, so I am wondering whether it's worth ripping back and knitting back up and casting off, but I've not, I've still not done that yet. So I don't quite know how easy that would be. Um, I don't know if I'm forced. Yeah, it's on the list <laughs> of possible stuff. Um, so if we have a look at the wear on these, these are pretty, pretty good. These probably, like they've been worn probably as much as the others. Um, but in terms of the outside, they are the least tattiest, you know, like there's such little pilling on the outside. Um, you know, it's like it, they almost look as good as they did when I first made them. Um, there is, what, maybe a tiny bit of pinky side felting, but, you know, nowhere near like the others. Um, it's interesting on the inside. Uh, what have we got? We've kind of got the same kind of, um, sort of pilling and then felting on the heel where it kind of just the fibers are kind of just starting to be pulled out of the yarn and kind of making really fine felted fabric inside but I think that's only a good thing um yeah again I haven't woven in my ends so there is a nice little felted tail <laughs> another one there um I think I, this is the best fitting that sock that I've done. So in terms of like how, um, so these are all basically my own like recipe in terms of what happens on the heel and the toes and like the lengths and stuff. Um, it's a heel flap and gusset. I just think I got, you know, the depth of this right. Um, I was gonna talk at the end about toe shaping because it's sort of, I've done the same kind of thing across everything. Um, so, oh no, we'll talk about it now because this is, yeah, the last pair of finished socks. Um, so basically on all of these, I've been experimenting with like an asymmetric toe shaping. 
Um, so it, all it means is that I actually have a left and a right with my socks um, and I just do a small number of decreases at the end to go this is big toe side and then we have a sort of a longer decrease on the pinky side. Um, for me this is just about the shape of my feet like it's just they are very kind of well that's like one foot it's just like this um so it just made sense to me to actually try and follow those angles rather than go for the kind of kind of sock um one thing i was trying to avoid with it you see was kind of excess pull on your like big toe side you know is it sort of you know is it pulling it up um is it stretching it out um but yeah like it just to know it just it just works for me <laughs> um i think i've i've kind of been a bit loose in terms of quite exactly you know is it three decreases on the toe side on the big toe side or is it two or whatever and kind of the different rates so you know i played with whether you're decreasing every round or every other round um, but I think the reason why I've kind of done it a little bit different every time is that I've been using slightly different weight socks, sock yarn. Um, so like my numbers have all been a bit different, like the gauge has been different. Um, so I've just, I just basically keep trying the sock on um, and, you know, knit, knit a few rounds. Okay, time to decrease again um, and literally just shape it as I go. Um, and then try and hope that I took enough notes when I did the first one to try and then just do the second one in one go rather than having to do the same try on and repeat process. But anyway, um, yeah, on the bagging out, these have bagged out a little bit, um, but again, not a problem. I can wear these in walking boots and they don't move, they don't itch, they don't, I don't get hot, like it's, I am in love <laughs> with these socks. This sock yarn is amazing. I will be getting more. All of the colours are amazing. Um, yeah, I just think, I mean that, I just think that's amazing. Like there's just, I think in terms of like whole potential, I think I did notice, oh God, ever so slightly. Again, that ball, outside edge, ball of my foot, ever so slightly opening out but I mean on these it feels even better um compared to the half just ever so slightly there so I'll keep an eye on it um but yeah we don't seem to be having any major problems at all so yeah it's a winner for me <laughs> just checked my notes there was one last thing that I wanted to mention about those is I was nervous because that yarn is so thin and therefore your fabric is so thin um I was worried that they would not be as warm as like the hearth socks um but actually they're really warm um which is just yeah amazing so I guess it's just kind of well it's just the power of wool isn't it like it's just such an amazing insulator um, so yeah, so don't be worried about that. Um, while we're on that like type of sock, that weight of sock yarn, um, I just wanted to show you um, the yarn that I'm planning on using next. Um, so I kind of, I'm paying attention to like what other people are recommending for sock yarn, especially in this category of, you know, non-superwash, no nylon, proper rustic, uh, sock yarns and so one of them that had been mentioned was the uh, tucker wool, tucker wool. Um, now there's a big difference 
there's a difference between a uh, tucker wool fingering and tucker wool sock yarn. So their sock yarn actually has nylon in it, whereas their fingering doesn't have nylon in it. So, so this one isn't designed for making socks with it, but I'd seen a lot of people use it and Melody Hoffman had used it. So of course, if she if, it, if she's given the stamp of approval, then that's that's good enough for me, um, at least to give it a go myself. So here is the ball band. And so I actually treated myself to three different colours. So again, this is another one that comes in 50 gram skeins, so it's good for colour play. So these are my colours, which I just, ugh completely in love with. Um, so I don't know if I've got, does it say the colours? Oh, it's just code names I think. Yeah, so anyway it's two different shades of green and then this sort of burnt orange rust. Um, so I've, I haven't used, I haven't knit with this yet but I have been doing a lot of mending with, um, with these yarns. They just, I mean, they're in my palette basically, so um, I've got a jumper that keeps getting holes in it, so uh, yeah, done a load of mending with these. Um, but I'm very excited. They, how does it compare? I'd say it's kind of like the natural sock, maybe a tiny bit thicker. Definitely not as thick as Hearth. These have all supposedly got the same yardage, you know, so it's like. 200 meters per 50 grams, whereas hearth is 330 meters per 100, so what's that? 150, 165, so 165 meters per 50 gram compared to 200 meters. Um, but yeah, supposedly Garth and Orr, Tucker Wool, Woolly Mammoth Natural are all supposedly the same yardage. So as I mentioned in my last video, um, Last year is kind of the year that I really got into spinning and one thing that I got very excited about was the idea of being able to spin my own sock yarn. So one of the reasons why I wanted to get so many of the kind of well-known and recognised and like approved um, natural sock yarns from other companies was so that I could kind of observe the differences and have sort of, well I guess observe the similarities, like what actually makes a good sock yarn. When I was at the um, Buxton wool gathering last year, um, I wanted to see whether I could pick up uh, some roving um, to have a go at spinning my own sock yarn. Um, I got chatting to uh, the lady behind Velvet Sixpence um, and we had a really long chat about um, different fibres. So she she does she's uh like an indie dyer but she has a lot of different bases um so it was really interesting it was a good opportunity to kind of debate about different bases basically right i've had, just had to try and rummage in all my stuff to try and find the ball band so i knew i could tell you what mix we, we decided to go for so i um i was a bit challenging for her because i was like i don't want like I want it to be British and I don't want any synthetic fibres in it. Um, and then we, you know, then it was like, okay, and what then would be good for um, sock yarn? So we ended up deciding to try out her, oh, I don't know how to say this. Zwartbuls? I think it's a German word. So, oh God. Um, but yeah, Zwartbuls and Exmoor Blueface blend. Um, so you can see there it's 6040. Um, so I think it was to do with the crimp basically um, and also like the length of the fibre. Like you don't want it to be, or we don't think you want it to be too short a fibre. Um, so this is the, I've basically spun 50 grams of this. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see, it's kind of like, it reminds me of like a beetle, you know, kind of those jewel tones. Um, it's also on a like a dark base, like on a like I think it's the uh, Zwartables. Um That's like a dark brown, black almost yarn. Um, I've actually got a fleece in the shed, 
so that's what that the colour of that is anyway. Um, but yeah, if I can kind of try and show you the fibres. So yeah, it is. That's like really nice. <laughs> really nice and long fibres. Sorry, this is really hard to show. Um, but also really crimpy. So yeah, we're hoping that that means that it's kind of just going to hold on to itself really well. Um, so I, yeah, this gave me the opportunity to try a fractal spin. Um, but I, I'll talk about that maybe more in the spinning episode rather than this. Um, but basically just means that you kind of get this like double colour change thing happening through your yarn. Um, so I just went for a two ply. Um, even though I thought I wanted more of a three ply for it being socks, but um, I've only got three bobbins, so I can only kind of ply onto two and uh, like spin onto two and then ply back onto the third. Um, but I went for this kind of really high twist. Um, so this is the sock yarn I've ended up with. Um, it is <laughs> much thicker um, than like any of these yarns that I've just shown you. Um, I think it's, I think it's even thicker than a DK really, um, although I think the needles I'm on, I am actually knitting these on 2.75 millimetres, so maybe you, like, that's okay as a, you would say it's DK weight, um, but yeah, I, <laughs> right, so these tocks are for Matt, not for me, um, he was very excited to get some really thick, chunky um, socks that he could wear, well, every day, but, you know, wear for walking as well. Um, so I've got as far as um, the heel. So let's just enjoy what has worked and then, <laughs> then we can talk about what hasn't worked. So this is where we're at. So I really, really am enjoying um, the colour change and how it's knitting up. Like it's just such, such a nice dense fabric. Um, like I do feel like this is going to work. I've gone for a two by two, two by two ribbing all the way around the foot. Um, mainly because I kind of just, yeah, I was kind of relying on the ribbing to make sure that it keeps hugging the foot basically um but I'm stuck because I've had just an absolute mare of a time with the heel Matt's heel is like he's got a very wide like the the that widest part of his foot as you travel around the heel is really wide and then it goes really narrow again and I'm just really struggling to fit it um especially trying to fit it toe up. Um, I wanted to go toe up so that I could just, you know, basically keep knitting up the leg until that 50 grams has, has gone. Um, but I'm just really struggling <laughs> to, to, to make it work. Um, I don't even know what this latest thing that I tried, I think it looks like I've done a mixture of a bit of a gusset increase, a bit of a short row heel, um, I've done slip stitches on the bottom as well as like coming up. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a bit worried that I'm just going to have to like go again on this heel um, or whether I'm better off coming um, cuff down, which is what I'm more used to. Um, so I, So what I decided to do actually was I have parked this project and I picked up another sock yarn. This was another one of these ones that I was like curious to try out um, so I could learn from. So, so that brings us <laughs> to this work in progress. Um, so this is the uh, Mondine sock yarn from, oh God, this is gonna be another name I'm gonna struggle with. Rotor, ro, rotor, sorry. Yeah, sorry. 
Um, it's Portuguese yarn. Uh, which bit do you want to see? This bit here. So this is another Melody Hoffman approved sock yarn. So I thought I'll give it a go. Um, it's also a bit more affordable than all of the others. Um, so I think it's less than £10 for a 100 gram ball. Um, also, it comes as a ball, so I don't need to cake it up on my knees. Um, so I still don't have a, a, a swift and ball winder. Um, but yes, so I thought, let's let's try and give Matt some socks. Because um, he's not wearing the first pair I made him, because they're full of holes. Um, but yeah, this is how far I've gone. Um, so it's this kind of like crazy monochrome speckle thing which reminds me of newspapers um, and we're going cuff down, I we go, what is it, two by two, um, I think I've actually nailed the cast on edge, so I'm, I am learning, I am learning, <laughs> it's, I think it's Jubilee or one of those where it's you know nicely rounded over the top um, nice long leg um and then so i've got it's i think it's a, quite a deep um gusset and heel flap um but we like it seems like this is going to be a good fit for him like the the, the latest try-ons have been going well um so yeah so i've gone past the gusset now and now i'm working down the foot um really enjoying this yarn um it does feel very different i think yeah because it's not a two ply all of those others are two plies let's see it's a three ply um so if i try and sorry i'll try and show you so it's much rounder much bouncier loftier um than the other two plies um, so yeah, very different. I'm really happy with the fabric. Like if I show you the, the plain stockinette section, like it's just so dense and so, I don't know, like it just feels like it's going to be so robust. Um, which again, it's just what, like what we both need really. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping, like this is the, this is the project that I'm actually knitting on right now. <laughs> um, I've promised, I mean, Matt's, that's been wishing for socks for a very long time <laughs> from me <laughs> and I keep promising them for various celebrations um but I am actually hoping that this is gonna these this pair this is just this is only the first one um but that this pair will be done in the next few weeks we're going on holiday next week so I'm hoping that that means a lot more knitting time um but yeah so this is very promising and then I'm hoping to take some learning then from how did I solve this heel to then go back to the hand spun and try and <laughs> try and invert it in my head and like I don't I don't know why I'm finding it so challenging because it shouldn't be but it is so right that's that one okay we have got one one last sock to talk about. So this has been sort of uh, driven by two things. One is wanting to like use up my stash. So any leftovers that I've got from projects, like trying to actually just get them used rather than store them indefinitely. Um, but also I've found like in the last couple of months uh, as it's gotten colder, what I'm enjoying wearing is that I'll wear, you know, like the stripy socks in the house but then I don't really like wearing slippers because I just, I don't like the stiff sole that most slippers have. So I then put on another pair of socks over those socks, like like a ridiculous pair of, you know, like, um, like slipper socks. I don't know. They're really, they're, they're too big for me. Like they're just, they're super big walking socks. Um, but I don't like the look of them. And I, I kept seeing people make, you know, like the Sunday socks from Petite Knit. And that kind of like classic slouchy cream ribbed sock that kind of you know is is made for like lounging about in bed on a Sunday morning with coffee and a book. Yeah, 
that's that's what I wanted to make. <laughs> so I still had I think like one and a half cakes of this uh, Plotelope um, from my forager sweater. Um, so I thought I oh man I'm just a Melody Hoffman fangirl aren't I? So I think she'd um, made some socks holding this double. Um, so I thought I would give that a go basically. Um, again I thought I would go um, toe up so that I could try and just use up all of the yarn and see how long I can make it. Um, but again I've got myself a little bit muddled trying to do a heel flap and gusset toe up style. So I've done my gusset increases and now I'm stuck and just, I mean I'm not really stuck but it just requires some thinking and I just haven't had the headspace for that. Um, so yeah I'll show you where we are so far. So it has just created this ridiculously fluffy look. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so fluffy and squishy. Like it's so dense. What size needle are we on? I think three and a half mil needles. Um, and yeah, um, I'm so excited to wear these. Um, yeah, I don't think I've got much more to say about them really. Um, yeah, just need to figure out the the heel um, and then we're fine. Um, which I would like to do sooner than later so that I can actually wear them during the winter months now. But um, yeah, got to prioritise matte socks first. That is it for my show and tell with socks. Um, I kind of just wanted to kind of like wrap up with some general conclusions. Um, just kind of wanted to say, like, yeah, basically all socks seem to bag out. Um, I will add a little bit in if I learn anything from blocking and we'll see whether the superwash versus the non-superwash, whether they then kind of cinch back in differently, maybe. Um, but also I just wanted to kind of like tell myself from last year that all of that time that I spent obsessing about the exact angle, the exact profile of that toe box, of the toe shaping for my asymmetric toes, I didn't need to be quite as precise as I was being because I hadn't really accounted for the fact that the fabric stretches a little bit. So there I was, you know, constantly, like I did, I don't know, a dozen little samples where I, all I did was knit the toes and I was just experimenting with you know if I changed that one row to be like this well it didn't really matter <laughs> as long as it was like generally kind of you know those two those two angles those two pitches were generally right then I think when you actually wear that sock when it's actually on that foot in those shoes I think there's then, then the fabric is almost like moulded to your toes is what, yeah, that's what I, I wish I told myself a year ago. Um, but saying that, like I am all for, like I will be sticking to asymmetric toe shaping. I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna go back to like those things because I just don't think for my shaped feet, I don't think that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping now that kind of, I guess 2022 was like the year of experimenting with socks um, and that this year coming now I've kind of, yeah, done the learning um, or at least done the learning for a toe, for a cuff down sock. I feel like I've nailed that one. Um, but yeah, that I can then kind of actually sort of smash out some more socks so that I can, yeah, Matt and I have both got enough for our sock drawer. Um, because yeah, woolly socks are definitely the way forward. <laughs> Big fan. Um, right, I'm gonna sign off for now. Um, it's, yeah, it's actually a sunny day today. We've had rain for the last couple of days, which has been a little bit miserable. Um, so I think we're gonna get out for a walk, hopefully. Right, 
Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye. Part two is going to be about everything is about... So part two is about everything... No, it's not.